Hi Year 4 and welcome to your Tuesday Maths lesson where we are going to be converting fractions to decimals. So just before we begin, just want to recap from yesterday um, the two new members of our place value family. Now today we're going to carry on just looking at the tenths. Um, we are going to be using place value grids, uh, so I just wanted to recap this with you. Now, before we begin, I just wanted to show you why we are using place value counters and place value grids to represent this and how it links to the models we've already been using. So we always do our bar models and in this example, and this is how we're going to be working through it, I've been trying to convert seven tenths into a decimal. Now if I do this as a bar model, the whole thing, my whole bar is one, one whole. So if we were at school, this would be a one counter. Because I've shared it into tenths, each of these is worth one tenth. And we write that as 0 0.1 for each one. Now if I've got seven tenths, I would colour in seven of those. So when I put it over here, I've got seven counters going into my tenths. They aren't ones because this whole thing is one. So those are seven tenths. And then what I do is I have a look at this and it will show me how to convert it to a decimal. So here I can see I don't have any ones. So in my ones is a zero. My decimal point stays in the same place, but I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven tenths, which I got from here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Seven tenths, so I put a seven in here. Now we are going to be doing bar models today, we are just going to be using this, but I wanted to show you how it relates to what we were doing yesterday. Here I've got an example of a mixed number fraction. So here we're working with 14 tenths. Now again, each of my full bars is worth one whole. Because I have 14, that's more than 10, so I coloured in 10 here and then 11, 12, 13, 14. Now I know from all my fraction work we've done that to them write this is a mixed number fraction, I've got one whole and one, two, three, four tenths. Over here it's slightly different. So if I am putting all of these into here, I've got 14 tenths, 14 go into my tenths, okay? And the rules of exchanging are exactly the same. So if we were, and you should be remembering this from when we were doing lots of work on multiplication and division, Whenever we get 10 counters in any of our place value columns, we need to exchange. And it is exactly the same here. So in my tenths, I had 14, and that is way too many. So I take 10 of them, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, and I exchange into here. And you can see that's what I've done here. I've crossed them out, just like we represented at school. So then I've got 1, 1, which goes here. And I've got one, two, three, four tenths left over here. Okay? So today what we're going to be doing is working through doing some more conversions using that method. But we are just going to be looking at um, place value grids. We're not going to do the bar models as well, although you can if you want to. So if you work today, you're going to be given a fraction. So the fraction I'm going to be doing is going to be, um, start with an easy one, three tenths. Okay, now I know we are working in tenths. If you then do your place value grid to go with it, you've got your ones and your tenths. So you always represent it like this, so we're practicing our representing the whole time. Three tenths. I know I'm only working in my tenths, so I put in one, two, three. Easy peasy. Now, I'm ready to convert it, so write the fraction, show it on the place value grid, and then write it as a decimal. So here I don't have anything in my ones, my decimal point goes in the same place, but I have three tenths, so it would be 0 0.3. Let's try a trickier one, because I think we can all do that easy peasy. This time I've got 12 tenths. Place value grid. 12 tenths. So first thing I do is I put my tenths onto there and I have 12 of them. So you can see if we were at school we'd be doing that, this with all the counters and cubes and things. 
So in my tenths, I need to do 12. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. I have got way too many in there. We know that when we have more than 10 or more in one of our place value columns, we need to exchange. So I need to get 10 of them. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Thank you. And they need to exchange over here. Okay? So then... Oh, I just need to let the pets out. Go. My cat was meowing to get out of the room. Okay, so then I've exchanged these, so we need to get rid of them. Okay, and I've exchanged for one over here. So now I'm ready to write as a decimal, and because I've done all of this, it's easy peasy for me to see. I've got a one in my ones and two tenths, so it'll be 1.2. Okay, let's try another one. This time I have got 31 tenths, ones, tenths. First job is to put it on my place value grid, okay? And I've got 31 tenths. Now already you should start to think, oh well that's going to be way too many. So make it easy for yourself and group them in tens as you're doing them. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31. Because I've set it out like this, I know I'm going to be exchanging 10 across. It makes it super easy. So I've got 10 here. You're going to go across and turn into a 1. These 10 tenths are going to go across and turn into a 1. These 10 tenths are going to go across and turn into a 1. And can't do anything with him. Okay? He is not a remainder, remember? We're not having remainders here because we can, we're just getting smaller and smaller. Right, so then I'm ready to write that as a decimal. So I look at my ones first. I've got one, two, three ones. My decimal point stays in the same place. And I'm not counting these, I've exchanged them. They've gone, they've been exchanged over here. So I've only got one left there. So it'd be 3.1. Okay? So I would now like you guys to have a go at converting the fractions to decimals that are put on your home learning document. And then you also have an extension to do if you want, which is explaining a mistake that somebody has made when they've been trying to convert. So the presentation should look like this. And remember, when you're working with a higher number, I would just do quick lines like I did in groups of 10 because your brain should already know, right, some exchanging is going to happen. Hi year four, I just also wanted to quickly show you how you would represent as a decimal when you have a mixed number fraction given to you. So the first ones we were looking at were all um, fractions with numerators and denominators, they were not mixed number fractions. So if we have a mixed number fraction, I'll show you how that works. So if, for example, you have one and two tenths, do exactly the same as you were doing before. So Put them into a lovely place value table. So here we've got ones and tenths. Okay, now remember this, because it's mixed number, this is a whole number. This is one whole, okay? So I've got one, one. Then I look at my tenths. Here I've got two tenths, one, two. Okay? I don't need to convert here. If you're working with a mixed number fraction, it should have already been converted for you. They've already got your number of holes. So then, exactly as before, I just look here to see what my place value grid shows me. And I can see I've got one in my ones, decimal point in the same place, and two tenths. Okay? Let's try another one. Let's do five and six tenths. Okay? So, first job, just as before, is do a lovely place value grid. Ones, tenths. And look at the number you're working with, okay? So here, I've got six tenths. One, two, three, four, five, six. And here I've got five whole, it's five. It's not five tenths, this is five holes. If we were doing bar models, we would have five bar models completely coloured and then six tenths coloured in the last one. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, 
And then once you've represented, you're ready to convert into decimal. So I've got one, two, three, four, five ones. Decimal point in the same place, one, two, three, four, five, six tenths. Okay? If you were given a tricky one where they hadn't converted it for you, well, into mixed number fraction, I mean. So if, for example, I was given seven and 13 tenths. That's why representing on a place value grid is always really useful because you can already see the number and see if there's any problems with what it looks like. So I fill this in. So I've got seven ones. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay, seven ones, whole ones. Then I've got 13 tenths. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. Now, straight away, my brain is saying, oh, Miss Fren, you've got a problem there. You've got way too many tenths in there, and you're absolutely right. I need to take ten of them and exchange, which we know how to do now. So you're going to have to go in there, bye bye, and they will turn into a one. Okay? So then, when I convert, I need to really have a good look at this, okay? So I'm going to look at my ones. I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Then looking at my tenths, they've all gone, they've been exchanged. I've only got one, two, three left, okay? You won't often see these because the whole point of having a mixed number fraction is that to show you the holes. Um, but in case you do come across these solving problems or anything, that you would just do that exact same method that we were doing at first. Okay, so have a go at some of the mixed number fractions and enjoy. <laughs> 